billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyi al-mustafa wa ala alihi wa mawala ikhwati fi al-din al-mushayidun al-karam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has preserved our lives through today I testify that he Allah is one I testify that Allah is a person and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should continue to bestow his choicest blessings on the soul of our leader Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. I hide under that supplication by supplicating one more time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should uh, continue to guide and guard us all, uh, believers in this path of rectitude, the path of Islam. I, I am happy that uh, after those interactions we've had before, here we are today again to uh, ponder matters that uh, are of concern to us as believers, to ponder another important issue uh, that we often take uh, for granted, but which actually occupies the core of our understanding of Islam. I'm calling your attention today to uh, that very subtle but very important aspect of our life. And that has to do with uh, the way we use our tongue, uh, guiding our tongue, putting our tongue into, uh, using our tongue to utter statements that uh, are likely to be uh, sources of uh, concern for us here on earth and in the hereafter. In the hereafter. Uh, first of all, I invite you, my brother and sister, to ponder Surah Tukov, Chapter 50, Ayah 18, Badal Istiaz wal Basmala says, Ma yalvidu min kolin illa ladehi raqibun atid. No statement shall be uttered by human beings. No statement shall come from your mouth illa ladehi raqibun atid, except that two angels are appointed to take record of them. Again, I invite you to ponder Surah to Isra. Uh, I am uh, I mean, Surah, Surah, Surah Tali Isra, chapter 17, uh, Ayah 50, where Allah says, Bada listi azwal basmala, wala takfu ma lisa laka bi ilmun, inna sam'a wal basara wal fuhada kullu ulahika kana ani wa masula. Never, ever, for once, takfu ma lisa laka bi ilmun, never, ever, begin to concern yourself, make statements, affirm, talk with confidence on matters that you have little knowledge of in the Samoa. Keep in mind that all your sensory organs are Samoa wal Basara wal Fuhada kullu ula hika kana ani Your Your sense of sight, your sense of speech, uh, your hands, your leg, your private part, your soul, kullu ula hika kana ani Every part of your body, all these sensory organs, you shall be asked to account for them on the day of resurrection. I'm humbled each time I read the Quran about this, uh, about, I mean, each time I get to this portion of the Quran, and I, by virtue of the privilege some of us have had about, I mean, having clear, near perfect, near perfect understanding of what Allah says. Um, I say near perfect because you can't, man asdaqu min Allah qila wa man asdaqu min Allah haditha. There's no way you can say you have a perfect understanding of what the message of the Almighty is. But by virtue of the privilege that we've had, I know I can interface, I understand. I ask the ayahs, the verses of the Quran, each time I take the Quran to ponder, I mean, I'm pondering. This, this interaction today is premised against, uh, upon uh, an incident to which I bore witness. I'm referring to an altercation that happened between a man and his wife. The sister of ours told us that she wants to get out of the marriage. Uh, we remonstrated, we appealed to her, we entreated, we, we, we did the best we knew how to do. We did the best we could to, to, to appeal to her. Why do you want to abandon this marriage? You've had three kids. You got married years ago. Uh, you were poor before you got married. Here you are. You have your own car. He has his own car. Uh, you started your marital life. I knew you started in a room 
But here you have today, you have this big mansion to yourself. You are well situated in the society. She is well situated in the society. Uh, when you talk about material cons, I mean material acquisitions, you are well, you are well blessed. When you talk about the, f the fruit of the, of the womb, my sister is also blessed. So I ask myself, essentially, what is the major reason you want to get out of this marriage? And she responded saying, whenever I utter a statement, my husband will, report, I mean, will reply back with 10 statements. Uh, if, I, if I abuse him, he will uh, return the abuse in 10 ways, manifold. When I say you are mad, you will tell me you are madder than I am. In other words, the main reason my sister wanted to get out of the marriage was because her husband was unable to, to guide his mouth, his tongue. He is usually not willing to say sorry. Uh, he is not that person who will say, I'm sorry, whenever, whenever he, he finds himself in, a, in, in, in error. And again, this, we have similar situation, similar circumstance, similar experience with that other sister too, who can say I'm sorry to her husband. She is always right. Her husband too is always right. So you had a challenge of two couples, A and B, both of whom would never say sorry, both of whom always want to affirm their right. So uh, that is just a perspective. If you go to town, you find yourself at the, at, 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 in, the, in the driver's seat. You find yourself in the town, in the marketplace, on the road. Uh, whenever you, f you, 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 have, you are unlucky to have an interaction, maybe you, you, you suffer certain uh, distraction, and you find yourself in a spot where you should ordinarily not find yourself in, the other driver will begin to curse you. Not you, but your mom. Not you, but your dad. Not you, but not your dad, but your great great grandfather. He would be willing to seek implication to cast them from beginning to the end, from money till night. Uh, that's just a perspective. What about the, the situation, the challenge we are facing in town today? The, 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 this seemingly irresistible urge on the part of humanity today to talk about things they have little knowledge of. Ah, that other person, I heard is going to do that. Ah, that person that I heard is doing that. Oh, the governor I heard is doing that. Oh, no, no, I'm, I've heard about it. He said, they say he is going to do it, he's going to do it. Without having any adequate knowledge of what we are talking about. These are situations we are finding ourselves today, and it's along that line, I wish to call your attention to the ayat of the Quran that I mentioned, Abin Nishu. Quran chapter 18, I mean chapter, chapter 50, Surah to Kof, Ayah 18, Allah says, Bada al al one more time, Ma yalvidu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqibun ati. Be sure, be certain of this fact that every statement you make, every speech that comes from your mouth, an angel, two angels have been appointed to take record of them. And again, I reminded you of the other ayah in Surah al Isra, chapter 17, verse 50, where Allah says, La takfuma leysa la kabir ilmun. Avoid situation where you will be pontificating over matters you have little knowledge of. Avoid situation where you will be bearing witness to matters you had little knowledge of. Allah says, In the Sam'a wal Basara wal Fuhada, Kullu ulahi kakana anu masula. Everything you are seeing on earth, every situation you find yourself on earth, every action you take while you are on earth, you shall be asked, you shall be called upon to account for them on the day of resurrection. But this ayah has been exemplified most wonderfully by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One day he sat down with his companion in a report brought by Abu Uraira, radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reported to have asked the, the companions. They were seated as they usually do that day, that afternoon, that evening. And the Prophet says, Do you know who the, who, the, who the bankrupt person is? Do you know who the most unfortunate person on earth is? 
do you know who we can refer to as that person who is the most unfortunate? The poorest of the poor on earth. Do you know the, the, the most unfortunate person in our world? And the companions in their usual selves, they sought responses from their experiences. So they responded, al Muflis Fina, the unfortunate one amongst us. Mala Dirahamada Huwalamata. The unfortunate one that we know of amongst us is that person, Mala Dirahamada Huwalamata. That person who has nothing that he can refer to as is. He has nothing in his pocket. He has no property. He has no car. He has no house. He is all alone in the world. He has no family. He's only alone in the world. He has nothing to call his. In a situation, in a, at a time when people will be bragging, saying, that is mine, that's yours. This is mine, this is mine. That house is mine, that's my car, my car, my car. My, my, my. Remember I mentioned this some time ago in one of our interactions. I call our attention to the error we often the, the trap that Shaitan often put us in. We were told by our teachers that Islam can be divided into four. There are four levels of Islam. When you want to practice Islam, there are four levels to it. Level number one is level of Shariha. Marahala to Shariha. At this level, what is yours is yours. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. That's my car. That's your car. Fine, as far as Islam is concerned. But that level is the lowest of all levels. As far as the, the mystics are concerned, the higher level of, I mean, on that is marhala to toriqa, the level of, of, of those who are on the path of rectitude. Those who have found themselves on the path of certainty. So they have understood the essence, the real meaning of the world. The marhala to toriqa here, its practicality would find expression when you say, what's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. In other words, I would avoid saying something is mine. But each time I say that, I would remind you that what's mine is yours. So you have a right to it. You threw nala and fussin wala wukana bihim khasoso. In other words, while it is Islamically, I mean, it's legal, Islamically speaking, for me to claim what's mine, mystics will want us to allow that other level to impact our life such that I will tell my brother what's mine is yours. So you have a right in what, I, you, what you know that belongs to me. And in fact, you recall, we are exiting the month of Muharram now. This was exemplified by the companions when they got to Medina, when they faced those challenges of life that we are facing today. They were poor. Those of them who left Mecca for Medina, they left their properties in Mecca. So they arrived in Medina as poor people, poor men and women. The companions in Medina, those who hosted them, the Ansar, they put into practice this level of Islam that I refer to as Marahla to Toriko. They told the companions of the Prophet who came from Mecca that what's mine is yours. Have a right you are free to use, to partake of my wealth. So they opened their bounties to those who came from Mecca, those who came from Mecca who left everything they had in Mecca so that they can join their companions, their friends, their brothers in Medina. Then they all became the first, that community that became a community of prosperity at the end of the day. But the level of Toriko is inferior to the other level, the higher level. And what's that higher level? That higher level is Marahala to Marifa. The, ma the level of certainty, Marifa, the level at which you understand that there's actually no yours, no mine, as far as the world is concerned. Marahala to Marifa, that level is that in which you know that there's no yours, there's no mine. There can be, when you say this is yours, this is mine, the assumption that you are running, that you are risking, the, the, the risk you are running is for you to say, to begin to, to tie your existence to that thing which you feel is yours. You are defining your personality by the materialities that surround you. You are thinking that your you can only be defined by what you possess. So the morality marifa 
teaches us that there can be no yours, there can be no mine. And again, this is inferior to the higher level, the highest level, marhalatul haqiqa, the level of the certainty of certainty, the level of truth, the truth that confronts us every day, every day, is that there's no yours, there's no mine. What remains is there's only he. What is in the world belongs to him. Going back, time this back with the essence of today's interaction. In other words, one of the major reasons we have challenges in our world today is that we often forget that we should not define who we are by what we have. Rather, we should define ourselves by what we have consecrated and dedicated to the service of Almighty Allah. So when the Prophet asked the companion that day, Manil Muflis, who is, the, who is the bankrupt person in our society today? Manil Muflis, who is the unfortunate person in our world today? Manil Muflis, who is the poorest person, the poorest of the poor in our society, in our circumstances, in our community today? And companions define that materially speaking by saying, Al Muflis, man la derehamalahu wala mata. It is that person who has nothing to call his. It is that person who has no bank account. It is that person who has nothing to share. But the Prophet Islam responded. He took them away from the concern for the material to the spiritual, to the religious, to the extraterrestrial. The Prophet Islam says, Al Muflis, man yati yom al kiyama, bisolati, was was siyami, was zakati. Wakod shata mahaza, wakod lafa haza, wasafa ka ma ma la ma ma da mahaza. The muflis, the unfortunate person, is actually not essentially that person who has nothing in his pocket. The unfortunate person is that person who, on the day of resurrection, will be resurrected. Recall that our life here is transient. It's ephemeral. It's dated. We are all like entities in the shopping mall. When you enter the shopping mall, every item you see on the shopping mall or in the shopping mall, there are two characteristics you find in them. Number one is the day those products were manufactured. Number two is the day those products would expire. So we are like entities, we are like items in the shopping mall. So the world, our world is the shopping mall of the Almighty Allah. So the Prophet Salaam says, when eventually that guy dies, and he is resurrected on the day of resurrection. He emerges from the earth. His bone and his flesh are put together back and is resurrected by Allah. Jaha yom al kiyama bi salati. He will emerge on the day of resurrection with salah. In other words, while he was on earth, he was a conscious Muslim who used to perform salah. Not only that, siya. He used to observe fast in the month of Ramadan. Not only that, he used to give money to the poor. Well, I keep, after, despite having done all this, Jaha yo malkiyama, kodishata mahaza, wa kodhafa dhaka, wa safa kama dhaka. In other words, the Muflis, the unfortunate person on the day of resurrection, will be that person who despite the fact that he has, to the best of his knowledge, discharged its res his responsibility to the Almighty. He did that, he, he performed solar at the right time. He had some money, he used to give out money, I mean, arms and benefactions to those who are in need. Again, he used to fast in the month of Ramadan. But despite that, Jaha wa Kodishata Mahaza, he used to be somebody while on earth who used to lampoon and impone and disparage and deride and make people feel or bewail the day they were born by their mothers. Shatta Mahala, he, while he was on earth, was somebody who used to use his tongue to make people regret the day they came to the earth. What called the cause of Is that person who has gone to town to impugn the personality of, this, of that other sister. Oh, that sister in Niger, don't mind her. 
Now, so then they wear a job. But beneath the job, there's nothing. She's a woman who doesn't know how to say no. What could the cause of He has, he has, he has libeled, he has impugned, he has derided, he has made his fellow human being wild and hard regret the day the person was born by his mother. Not only that, what called Safaka Ma Adaka. Can you imagine? The Prophet Salam is explaining who the bankrupt person will be on the day of resurrection. He now said, Jaha what called Safaka Ma Adaka. That person who, despite the fact that he used to pray, when the month of Ramadan comes, he would fast in the month of Ramadan. He had means, he had money in his pocket. The poor will go to him, he will also assist the poor. Well, I keep. But despite the fact that he has done all this, he was somebody who also committed murder. He, 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 while on earth, he murdered, he, 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 he killed a soul unjustly, without warrant, without justification, without legal backing without any, any reason for that to be done. The first Islam says that person, that day, will be a Muflis, will be an unfortunate person. What will happen is that you has been a Sanati, Allah will now bring up the measurements. All his acts of goodness, good, good act will be placed on his scale. Now, they will now begin to redeem his evil ways, evil ways by picking some of his good deeds and adding it to the good deeds of those against whom he committed infraction while on earth. So, he was a nice man while on earth, but he failed to hold on to his tongue. So, the person against whom he committed blasphemy will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah now said, don't worry. Let's, let's redeem his misbehavior. So we shall pick some of his good acts and add it to your own good acts. So they will begin to pick from the good acts, the good deeds of this unfortunate person until such a time that all his good deeds will be exhausted. If after all his good deeds have been expended, in, I mean, in, as redemption, for those against whom he committed infraction while on earth. Fali Azubillah. What would happen next is that you has mean awzari wa min sajiati min sajiati awlai. They will now begin to pick from the evil deeds of those against whom he committed infraction while on earth. They will be adding it to his own infraction. And at the end of the day, Torah has failed now. The person we are talking about will now be thrown into hellfire because he had nothing left with which he can redeem his infraction, his misconduct while on earth. Let me quickly start this. Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he says, Is that the mountain li ma'abayna lahiyateni warijilei udminu lakum al jannah? If you can guarantee for me the space between the two hairs, the hair here and the hair here, and the entity between your two legs is that the mantum li mambayena lehyate lehye warijle if you can guarantee for me that which is between the air on top and the one on that that is your tongue and that that organ between your legs if you can guarantee them for me ut minu la kuma jana i will guarantee paradise for you in other words conclusively concluding Forget the oxymoron. If you want to live a life of success here on earth, and if you want to be sure of entering paradise on the day of resurrection, guide your tongue. Do not use your tongue to impone, to utter statements that will make your fellow sister or brother regret the day he or she was born. I close with this. The day I chanced upon this, I've been trying to use it. Prophet Muhammad says, Man gafara, man is tagfara. Yeah, 
man is stuck for any man dollar ma hu fa ko de zala fa ko de fa ko de hau fa ko de halaka shaitan he who fa ko de hazama shaitan the prophet sam says he who seek a last forgiveness for the person who wronged him the status of the person who has done that as far as allah is concerned will be of the highest my brother let's seek paradise with our tongue by dedicating it to that which allah will be pleased with cultivate the habit of saying sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry cultivate the habit of doing istighfar astaghfirullah cultivate the habit of never using your tongue to implicate to utter implication i tell those who are close to me i use my tongue to seek blessing from allah i can't afford to use it to utter any word i pray sincerely and fervently that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it possible for you and me to have had this interaction will continue to make our feet firm on this part of rectitude and guard our tongue yeah so that we wouldn't be among those who be unfortunate on the day of resurrection subhana rabbika rabbala izzata amma yasifu wa salamu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillah